handoff to John oh. Taylor. Hughes hole. He's at the 30. He's going to go. 10, 5, touchdown. Jonathan Taylor made a man miss the line of scrimmage and then runs it into Pater. And a one-handed INT. Are you kidding me? Kenny Moore. What a play by Naheem Hines. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What is going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice Colts podcast. On with me, two friends of the show, Mr. Jim Aiello from the Indianapolis Star, Mr. Stephen Burton from Forged in Blue podcast. Fellas, thanks for coming on. There's been a lot of stuff happening. Unfortunately, not a whole lot around the Indianapolis Colts. Not a lot of content to talk about right now. Uh, So, guys, I kind of wanted to talk about this because – I'm sure you guys saw it last night and even going into today. Colts Twitter is kind of in shambles right now in certain ways. People freaking out, you know, about Colts not signing this player, this player going to a division rival, all this kind of stuff. So I wanted to kind of stop and discuss and get your guys' insight on why Chris Ballard and the Colts haven't really been active much in free agency besides bringing back a couple of their guys, the restricted free agents, Zach Paschal, George Odom, some of those guys. That's about all that's about all the Colts have done right now. Uh, so, Jim, we'll start with you first, man. What are your thoughts on why the Colts haven't been more active here in the first two days of legal tampering? Just the way Chris Ballard works. This is it. This is this is how he does it. Like he doesn't spend top of market. I think the, the quote that everybody likes is that he doesn't play. He doesn't pay, you know, a money for B players, doesn't play B money for C players. That's just not the way he's going to do it. He believes firmly in building through the draft, collecting as many draft picks as he can and doing it that way and rewarding his own guys. Um, If he can, and obviously the Nico Autry thing, I mean, not technically a draft pick, but a guy that that he did want back and then did did leave. But um, yeah, he's always been a kind of a bargain hunter. He's that that's the way he does it. He he wants to go wait wait till the first wave of free agency passes, maybe even the second wave of free agency passes. Like we saw guys like Xavier Rhodes and Justin Houston, some of his better signings have been later on in the process. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to hunt those bargains. So, I mean, again, I think if an opportunity strikes him, and he feels like the price is fair. And he, he, I think he would pay big for a big free agent if he felt that free agent was worthy. I just didn't think that um, this, it turns out again, this time around, he didn't feel like that was, there was one of those guys on day one. Um, I don't think he's going to make a huge splash in, in the coming days, but I do think they'll, they'll address some needs coming. Hmm. Steven. Yeah. I mean, I a hundred percent agree with Jim. I mean, it's, it's what he does. You know, he doesn't, uh, I love the quote. He doesn't pay a money for B players. I think that's such a great quote. But it's I've, – I've personally – I mean, and Cody, I think you're kind of the same too a little bit. I've almost tried to stay a little bit away from Colts Twitter the last couple of days since since legal tampering opened because it's just – it is – it's 100% in shambles as people look at this and they're like, oh, my God, you know, look at all these players going everywhere. I mean, he – I feel like he has who he is he, – he has his targets. And he's probably been in on some of these high-ticket players – but he's not willing, you know, he has his market. He has his, his point that he's not going to go past. And you, when you look at some of these contracts that are going out, they're just, they're massive and they're ridiculous for some of these players. Yeah. And uh, you know, you talked about like Danico Autry a little bit, Jim, I kind of want to double back on that because we discussed it a little bit when it broke last night, but we haven't really like talked about the why now from what I've understood, it seemed like the Colts were trying to match an offer that the Titans gave, but it was like a little bit more security in year two there for Autry. I'm not 100% sure if that's what the legitimacy is on that or not. Uh, but I'm curious your guys' thoughts on Autry leaving to go to the Tennessee Titans and uh, what that says maybe about how Ballard or how Ballard valued uh, a guy like Danico Autry and also what the Colts potentially could do now uh, to address that defensive interior slash defensive end. So yeah, to the to the first part of your question, listen, like I, he did like Danico Autry. The Colts do like Danico Autry. They did want him back, but let's let's not forget they had opportunities to go get to keep him. They had uh, the last six months, a year, if they wanted to resign him, they could have resigned him. They were the only team that was allowed to negotiate with him, you know, realistically uh, for the last few months. Uh, I, again, so again, I, you, you do say yeah, they like him, but how much did they like him, and how much did they want him back? Well, apparently not enough, right? Because the Tennessee Titans were willing to go to a place that they weren't willing to go. You had it right, uh, according to the source that I talked to, that the, the Titans were willing to offer a little more security, I would say, in the first two years in terms of guaranteed money. Um, the Colts came in late. It seemed like the Colts were going to let him go, given that the price tag where it was going to be. And then 
um, they went back with the Nico Autry and, and the Colts said, okay, we're in, let's talk about this. But ultimately they just decided that they didn't want to get to that point. They didn't know they were going to be losing him to the Titans, which is kind of a funny twist. Um, they, once they found out they were out onto Nico Autry, they found out it was Tennessee who they were negotiating against. And, and that ended up being kind of a, um, I guess not a funny twist. It kind of hurts to lose him to a division rival like that. So listen, there are other options in finding again to Nico Autry, like we talked about at the beginning of this great player, Gave the Colts uh, 20 sacks, 100 tackles in his three years with the Colts, but also was a bargain find for, for Chris Ballard a few years ago. In 2018, they were switching from the 3-4 to the 4-3. Uh, they brought him in because of the strength and speed, his, ability, his versatility along the defensive line, and they gave him less than $18 million a year, or $18 million total uh, for three years, and, and that worked out great. It was a great bargain signing for him, a starter, a guy who I think I, I really like a guy like that because he can start it anywhere which means he can be depth for you everywhere as well. It kind of serves two purposes. So I do think there are guys like that on, out, on the free agent market. I don't know who they are. I mean, again, like that's Chris Ballard's really good at finding these kind of guys. I have name. I like Dietrich Wise. He got signed by the Patriots. That was a guy I thought could fit that, um, that scheme. I think Solomon Thomas is another guy that, that has the ability to slide inside and out and can be cheap and, and can be effective. and knows DeForest Buckner. So again, there are options to fill it, but yeah, losing to Nico Autry is going to hurt. Mm. Yeah. For sure. Steven, do you have any extra thoughts on that? On Eddie Colatry? Man, uh, Jim, Jim did. <laughs> he said it best on a lot of it. But I mean, at the same time, you know, it, it goes across the board with any other free agency signing. You know, the Ballard had his price. He knew what he wanted to pay him. And he did like him because he did go, you know, they did go back. They did think about it. Um, I mean, I, I would agree too that it is when you look at him, he is probably the probably the one of the best free agent signings that Ballard has actually had bang for your buck wise, mm -hmm. you know, how much he paid him in the production that we got from him. It does stink. I mean, I think everyone knows some of the guys in Colts brawl uh, are pretty upset that he went to the Titans that that does add an extra little layer, but it's kind of, it kind of goes back to, you know, throw it back, back in the day a little bit when they used to take a lot of our players. So, I mean, he, he was fantastic for the Colts. He'll be missed. you got to think that, like you said, Jim, that Ballard's got someone in mind to plug into that position. Mm. Yeah, i got to think about, too. Like, And I think this is something that a lot of fans, like, and also going back to another Ballard quote about the whole quote of, like, everybody wants instant coffee, but that's not a reality. Um, the thing I like, man, is, like, okay, Ballard is, like, people think that, like, the Colts are panicking or something. Like, I guarantee you they have a plan. Like, I guarantee you, Ballard is not the guy that I would associate the word panic with by any stretch of the imagination. People need to realize, man, like, okay, by the time tomorrow rolls around, there's going to be a lot of cuts that are going to happen along the league, some good players that are going to get cut. And I think, like, all these teams are spending this insane amount of money when it comes Chris Ballard with, what, 40-plus million in cap space. I mean, for me, I kind of look at it like, man, I think that was actually probably one of the better decisions he could have made Despite the fact that, Jim, I know we talked off air and Steven, we've talked a little bit. We wanted a pass rusher, like one of those top guys in free agency. But for me, it makes a lot of sense for what Ballard's doing. It's such a Ballard move to just wait for everybody to go crazy. The bad teams make those crazy things. Now, we'll see what happens with the Patriots. They've kind of like used all their stimulus check, I think, at this point. Um, but <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. I cannot believe they signed two tight ends to like that much money. Like I think it was 12 and a half for both of those guys per year. It's absolutely nuts to me. Yeah. Uh, but I just think it's such a Ballard thing, guys, that that he would just sit back and wait for good players to become available and sign them for a lot less than maybe some of these day one, day two guys got signed for. Um, guys, I want, I'm curious your thoughts on maybe some guys. I know, Jim, you mentioned J Solomon Thomas is a big name that I know I would like. Uh, I'll start with uh, Steven first. Steven, are there any guys that really stick out to you that are still available, still in the market, that you think potentially could be really good fits for the Colts? It's funny that, I mean, I, I almost want to piggyback on, on Jim again on it is that that is a name that I've loved um, for a while. You know, I mentioned him on our podcast a while back that I thought that was an extremely good fit because of all, mainly predominantly because of his relationship with the Forrest Buckner. Uh, he knows how to play next to him. And obviously he's going to bring the best out of everybody. Uh, I mean, if I'm looking around, I mean, there's still, and there's still, Cody, I think you said it best, man. There's still so many players, you know, and my, my co-host Rashad, he, he sent, you know, he sent a message out talking about the very same thing that you mentioned, Cody, of there's going to be a lot of, I mean, Dory Jackson just got cut here in Tennessee yeah. uh, in the last hour. So, I mean, there's a lot of players that are going to be cut, uh, 
you know, coming up to this deadline and he's, he's sitting there with a handful of cash. Um, I, I kind of say again, same thing that, that Jim says is I don't get paid to figure it out. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of good players. I think the joke inside and Cody knows this one, you know, I was, I was, I was alone on the Island of John Ross for some reason. I don't know why. And I'm glad that I guess he's gone. So I don't have to worry about that. I got, I got kind of poked at a little bit, but I mean, you know, you do wonder with some of these, you know, T Y's obviously still out there too. You do wonder with some of these players that are still sitting out there. You know, I think I can't remember who put it uh, about just the, the, the bear market for a wide receiver right now is just ridiculous in regards to, Jim, it may have been you. Was it you? Did, did uh, I don't know. I'm trying Maybe to remember. Someone, someone sent something saying they had talked to one of the receivers and said that the the market is just horrible for receivers well, right now. I retweeted that. That was Josiah Anderson. I was going to say I knew. Oh, I knew. I thought I saw yeah. your name on there. Yeah. But I mean, it's just there's there's so many players that he's going to be able to look at still, and he's still sitting with. Tons of money. I mean, I'm super interested. I mean, like I said, I've kind of tried to stay away from Colts Twitter just because it is so insane right now with what people are saying when this is what happens every year. It's like it's it's happened three years in a row. We feel like we should get used to it by now, but uh, I know. It's, just, it's just absolutely crazy, man. Jim, are there any guys that stand out to you that you're like, man, I would like him in Indianapolis? Um, well, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think we're just going to make this a, a Solomon Thomas – Love fest, I guess. I, again, I, I just like, you know, I like guys with pedigree um, yeah. and he's got that. Obviously I like that his familiarity with Forrest Buckner and I like guys with versatility, especially guys that aren't going to be, you know, again, I think start, Solomon Thomas would have to be a star player. He hasn't been that, but he, I do like guys with versatility. I just like guys that can move along the line and play, you know, I think we all saw when DeForest Buckner went down and Autry was hurt. They didn't have any answers at three technique. It's no offense mm-hmm. to Grover Stewart. Grover Stewart's a heck of a player. It's just not the position he plays. Right. Tried to fill in there. didn't work out. I want to see guys. I want to see more players that, hey, if a guy gets hurt, if a guy misses time for any reason, you can plug him in and your defense won't fall apart against a team like Tennessee. So yeah. you have to have guys like that. So I like I like versatile players like that. Um, I think I wanna, don't want to overlook, though, um, offensive line. I, I definitely think that needs to be addressed. The tackle, probably. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know who would say no to a reunion with Joe Haig. At this point, I mean, the guy is a, a, a cheap backup who played some good football for the Colts, played some good football in Tampa Bay. Um, as a guy that I could definitely see, I think the I think kind of the thread the needle move for the Colts is you sign a veteran that you feel okay starting um, if you had to, and then if you can draft a guy in the first or second round, great, you can play that guy, and then you have a veteran backup. And if you don't, well, okay, great, now you have this veteran that you feel pretty good about playing next to Quentin Nelson, which makes your job a lot easier. They still have Will Holden. I know they like Will Holden a lot too. So again. Not, they're not desperate at tackle, but I do think that adding some depth there is going to be important. And I will say it's something I've brought up on Twitter, written stories about it, but you guys mentioned a couple of guys who've been cut. Dory Jackson, Dennis Kelly got cut down in Tennessee too. Another guy mm-hmm. who's played some tackle. Yeah. Um, that was the guys that, that Ballard can sign that won't count against the comp pick formula next year. And again, like I know that's, they're not letting go of a ton of free agents that will get huge comp pick returns, but this is, a, again, we know who, are the, who this GM is. He likes to make picks. He likes to have as many picks as he can have. And we also know that he gave up picks for Carson Wentz, gave up a third this year, a second or a first, maybe next year, depending on, you know, all, all that ever happens with Carson Wentz. If he can start to make up some of the value that he lost uh, in the Carson Wentz trade by signing free agents who have been cut that won't count against a comp pick formula, getting some of those picks back when he let guys go like Danico Autry and maybe T.Y. Hilton or Xavier Rhodes, I think that's a kind of a two for one for him. Replace the talent, get some picks back. So something to keep in mind, not saying that's exactly the way they're going to operate or I'm you know, positive. That's the way he's going to do it. Again, I think if there are opportunities on unrestricted guys, he'll go get them. But yeah. that is something to keep in mind. Yeah, for sure. I kind of had this thought like, and this will be the last thing we'll talk about here. So obviously up to this point, you would look at probably two positions in particular that like the Colts have drafted that really nobody has panned out to be what you thought. And that would be obviously corner and that would be defensive end. Right. My kind of thought is a guy like a Dory Jackson, you go sign him, a young player still. He's had really good moments. He's had some bad moments, but he's still a young guy that you feel like he could be pretty good, honestly. Um, it's kind of crazy to think like Tennessee's defensive line is so good. And then, I, you know, I posted that picture of like the drawing <laughs> of the horse, right? The back's like really detailed. That. The front's like a little kid drew it. I'm like, that's how I feel like the, the, the Tennessee defensive line versus the Tennessee secondary is right now. Um, but like, I, I'm kind of like wanting Ballard to maybe go after some of those guys that maybe 
Now, I don't want to say he's outright like flopped on some of these guys because these guys are still on the roster, right? They still have some potential, but none of these guys have been bona fide true number ones at this point. Um, so I would not be opposed to a guy like Adore Jackson bringing him in for a year uh, or a couple of years, maybe. I don't know exactly what they do. Um, I, I don't know. There's a couple of guys that, that still interest me. William Jackson, I don't think he's got signed yet, if I'm not mistaken. So there's a couple of guys there that really interest me at corner. I think that's probably where I would address it. And then you're right. I think offensive tackle has to be the first two rounds, no doubt. And then, you know, maybe Ballard surprises get the pass rusher in the first round or something. Maybe one of those guys falls or maybe even a wide receiver. I don't know. There's a lot of options for him to do, but I think folks just need to relax. We haven't even officially started free agency yet. Like it hasn't even officially started. So there's still a lot of good players out there. And I hope that this helped some Colts fans who are maybe like, is it time to hit the panic button? It's not time. I don't believe. I think we're all in that same, same wavelength. Ballard has done this before. That's the type of GM he is. He's going to find value guys like he's done every single year. And you know what? If he feels like they're going to fit the system, they're probably going to be pretty productive with Indianapolis based off of his track record. But I think that'll do it for this one. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Stephen, for coming on and talking about this topic. I know it's like kind of a hot topic right now. It kind of felt like it needed to be addressed and talked about a little bit with two guys who follow the team as closely as I do, or you probably Jim, you have more insight than both of us. So uh, appreciate it, man. Uh, and appreciate you, Stephen, for coming on, man. It's always fun to have you guys on. No problem, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. That was fun. Absolutely. Yep. We'll see what the Colts do, but uh, right now nobody's officially signed. So hopefully things will change maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. We'll see what happens, but Uh, For these guys and myself, thanks, guys, for tuning in. And as always, go Colts.